What's going on, family? Man, I hope you guys are having an awesome, absolutely awesome day. We are back. They're back, back, back at Illinois Motors, man. Yeah, man. And we are, uh, we got something special for you. Yeah. How's it going, brother? Y'all see who we back with, man. This is your family. Yes. And I'm in awe. Uh, this is your dad, actually. Yeah. Technicality. Yeah. And, uh, this is dad that played dad. football. This is dad that was an athlete. Oh, yeah. It's the, <laughs> this is the super athletic dad. Yeah, man. So, what do you think? This thing is beautiful, man. Do you know anything about it? About this one? About the ZR1. Yeah. I know they're very, very, oh my God, very special. Yeah. This should have the LS9 motor, supercharged. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the wind. Yeah. <laughs> I know what it sounds like? A bunch of doors locking oh, at the same time. Yeah, I get freaked out. I'm here late sometimes, 8, 9, yeah. sometimes 10 o'clock. Yeah. Last, last Friday, I was there till 11, here till 11. Oh, Not my actually goodness. actually working. I was doing my own stuff. Yeah. Don't, don't hit the BBB. We're a good business. They don't treat me like <laughs> so, um, I like this pillar. I never paid attention to this pillar. These are very special cars. Very. For a lot of reasons. Uh, depending on who you ask... Some people call this the last real Corvette. Yeah. I don't know if that's I heard that. the case. Most people agree that the last real Corvette is the C7. C7. Absolutely. The C8's way much of a departure off of what Corvettes yeah. used to be. Yeah. And, but what's funny is this car is not really, this is kind of an exception in most people's mind because most people didn't remember when this car was $120,000, right? And that was back in like 08. A yep. Line. Yep. That's a lot of money for a Corvette. Yeah. So when you're thinking about it, this even is more now. Yeah. This is depending on the car. Depending on the but car. This car is kind of the car that ruined, quote unquote, ruined Corvette's price attainability for the highest performance trim. And technically, it started with, if we're going further back, it's the C401, because that was double the price of a normal uh, Corvette. Yeah. This is similar, very similar. So the yeah. Z01 is saying in the lineage of being very expensive. But it's always very, the very top expensive. of the heat, yeah. right? So Z01 always took things to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, and this one does. They didn't, it, they didn't nickname the first Z01 King of the Hill for nothing. Yeah, for real. And technically, that wasn't the first Z01, if you didn't know. Did you know the first Z01 was the C3 Corvette? 
I did not know that. ZR1 was not a trim. It was, an it was an optional. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, so it was not its own trim. It was the bigger motor, better brakes, uh, rock crusher, four-speed manual transmission. Well, I do remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for some reason, I don't. I'm not putting it together with the C3, uh, the C3 for some reason. But I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Most people don't know that. I did a shoot. I remember it was an option. It was in a pack. It wasn't a package. Yeah. So there you go. That is a little crash course on where C ZR1s technically began. Started with C3 as an option code. C4 was its own trim. And it was ludicrously fast with its own unique engine. Yes. Which every ZR1 after that, C6 and C7 have all followed the same thing. They've all had unique engines. Yeah. This engine was not shared in anything else. Right. And that is like the main conversation piece because this engine is regarded to be the best LS engine of all time. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's the top of the hill. And modifying people, it's the LS3. A lot of people do say LS9 because this is like LS3 on fucking crack. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's king of the hill, man. It it, yeah. it took it took um, this car to the next level. That motor is a monster. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, when they got away from the the seven liter, of course, and went with the supercharged, it just went to the next level. The LS9 was the um, was the optimal choice. Not only that, but it was the one that was able to manage whole mm -hmm. and put that power to those wheels without sure. a problem the z06 um is a monster too i know oh yeah Someone very much so it's they're very very fast the yeah, they are. specifically yeah yeah the well i know those are fast, fast too with this seven liter but the seven liters those are crazy it's uh crazy. torquey it's right off it's the all line torque. it's all torque that yeah. thing just it hunkers down and go but you can't boost them can't boost them no nah, you tear them up and you, you know they're great all-motor heads can yeah. cars because they only weigh like 3,200 pounds. Perfect all-motor car. To me, it was when they started doing the new C6, and it was going to be an old all-motor car. The Z06, excuse me. Um, the first thing that came to mind for me, I'm just making sure I record it. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> first thing came to mind for me was the uh, was the C6 Z06 because mm -hmm. of course that was. Um, the naturally aspirated. So the C7 is when we we added the supercharger to the Z06. And that Z06 engine was shared in the Z28 that we just had here. Yeah, it's absolutely. So yep. So that's a cool engine. Yep. That's a cool engine. And it, man, hearing a seven liter V8 go past 7,000 RPM is It's amazing, cool. man. It's absolutely cool. amazing. So. It's one of the reasons that draw me to the Z06 the, on a C3. Uh, C6 platform. I would love to have one. Yeah, yeah. I would love to have one. Absolutely. Man, this thing is super clean, too. How many miles is on this thing? That is the party piece of this one. Oh, my God. Any guesses? Both. <sighs> 5,000 miles. That's a good guess. That is a great guess. Okay. But you're wrong. Are you serious? 1,903 miles. <laughs> It is a 3ZR, so it's got all of the... So everything. It's got everything, all the options. Everything. It's got everything. This is kind of the king of the hill in its own ZR1 spec way is this spec is king of the hill. I mean, you can get rare because, like, there's some crazy rare orange colors and stuff like that that were available. But as far as desirability, white ZR1 is kind of the king of the hill, the desirability. Yep. Because um, it looks amazing. It looks fantastic, and they were exceedingly rare in white. Remember the most, the first um, Carvette mm -hmm. to get its notoriety it was white with red seats. Yeah. So the C1 with mm -hmm. the white with red seats, that's when you have the grandpa of all grandpas. Yeah, the first Corvette with the straight six. <laughs> Facts. And then they put a V8 in it, it fixed everything. Yes. But it didn't, they ruined the looks. Yes. I think the very first ones, if you put a V8 in the earliest cars, they look. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think so. I think they did ruin the look a little bit. I still take a C2. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. C1, C2, C3. Yeah, but there was two versions of the C1. Yeah. So. You had the one with the, uh, the straight six, and then you had the one that they put the uh, big motor in. Yeah. Right, right. So anyways, this is all stock, and that is another rarity, because so many God. people modified these things. And what isn't there... You know, not to improve on. There's so much to like that you can expand on 
that it makes it almost irresistible to do bolt-ons, pulleys, ported blower, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So this supercharger at the time was pretty big for a stock supercharger. I think, I think it's a 2.35 liter Eaton. And Hellcat's stock now, since 2015, have been 2.4s. So Ooh. it was this very similar size, if not the same. Um, I did not know that. So, but if you think about it in context, Hellcats came out in 2015. This is in 2009. Yeah, yeah. A this 2.4 is... liter supercharger from the factory. My God, that gave you all the room in the world. In 2009. And to go well over the thousand horsepower mark, all with a stock blower. That was pretty much unheard of. 2009. You yeah. you got to think being ahead of a game. Yeah. They were way ahead of the game with this. To take a stock blower to that level. Way ahead of the game with yeah. this. Yeah. So. Sheesh. Sixty manual, all of them. These were not available with automatics like the C7 ZR ones. Right. Um, and it's probably better for it because, to be honest with you, I don't personally find the GM can tune a transmission, an automatic one, that well. If you do some other tuning with it, you can make it respond better. But factory tuning is a little bit. There are some delays with upshifts. And yeah, that's and true. Factory. That's you're absolutely and, right. Especially and, in un, under normal driving conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Six speed in this, it feels fantastic. Clutch feels great. It's all what you want it to be. Yeah. Um, and I mean, look at it. it's just cool. I, like, there's just subtle details. Look at these. Look yeah. At this. I didn't even notice this until we had this car and I was shooting. I'm like, yeah. I drove that car up there. Yeah. That's another C6 and yeah. zero one. Yeah. And I never noticed that this is like some like crazy flares there. Yep. Like, and there's all the carbon fiber everywhere. The whole roof and this panel here is carbon. It's, it's awesome. This car is absolutely, it's just beautiful, man. I mean, I can, you can tell it's a thousand mile car. It's just, it's perfect. It's perfect. It reminds me of a new car and it's just beautiful, man. I feel like you're kind of at a loss here. Hmm? You're kind of at a loss. I, I am, I'm in awe of this car, like really. <laughs> like, if you heard the exhaust, it didn't sound like, God. If you look back at the vi videos, the last video here was a Camaro. And that exhaust was... Insanely loud. This is definitely like the opposite end of the spectrum. Absolute opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> it's so, so, so tame. The tips are clean. And it's just like, it's that moment it's just a beautiful car man and this is one of the ones you, you cannot you can't fix perfection man yeah, to touch this car and do something other than drive it you just you just another you're taking thing, it away from yourself another thing by the way that is the factory there's still factory plastic on that part there oh wow and that stock has never ever been used it's still in the factory netting. Oh, wow. For people who care about that sort of thing. Factory on a, the, the seatbelt yep. wrapping. There you go. It's, it is basically factory now. Pretty much. <clears throat> Carbon fiber on the dash. Still got the sticker on the AC. There's literally, that is the only description. It's perfect. Not a scratch anywhere. These guys, our, our detailers, they clean this thing in no time because it came here so spotless and we didn't have to do any buffing or anything. It's just perfect. It's got 1,500 miles. I mean, God. 1,900. 19. You said 1,900? Yeah, just over 1,000. Let's just call it that. And... I'm literally in awe. This thing is just so nice. It's just so nice. I love the leather on the dash. Suede inserts on the seats. <laughs> She's just super nice, man. Ashtray, for those who remember. Garage door opening. Huh? Never mind. Stupid, stupid joke. We'll just move on. Fake trace. He said, he said, fake trace. What is going to be a, a charging port 
in the uh, where you yeah, sit it's, it. It's literally just gonna be a charging just port. a charging port. Vape trays. Shall we take a look at the glory of uh, an LS9? Yes. All right. You got it. Yep. And it is definitely a vet. Mm -hmm. Low to the ground. Oh, yeah. da -da 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 -da. Stock. <sighs> but it's so clean. It's perfect. Man. That's it. It's just perfect. Look at this carbon. I feel like we're in, it's like church. You got to be quiet when you're looking at this thing. <laughs> it is so beautiful. I love that little peekaboo window. It was criticized by like Top Gear and stuff, but I think that's one of the coolest things. It's about pretty the cool. I think it's really cool about it. Yeah. It's definitely, I can see the perspective. It's very like cruise night ish. Yeah. I don't have to pop my hood. To yeah. Pop so you can see what's going on. I can still flex that I've got an LS9 supercharger. Right. There, but, uh, so these engines are legendary, as we, as we discussed earlier. I mean, this is. So this is something that I thought was very interesting. When the Demon first came out, I did some comparisons because by the, the Demon is a 6.2 liter push rod V8 with a suit factory supercharger. This is the same thing. The difference is the Demon supercharger is 2.7 liters. This is 2.35. Yes. And I was looking up and the Red Eye motor is the same thing as the Demon. It's yeah. the same engine. Yeah. So I was starting to look up prices. You know what's very interesting? A new Demon engine from Dodge was 30 grand back in 2018. Okay. I don't know what prices have jumped up to now. Oh yeah, they're or ridiculous. Gone down or I don't know. So it was 30 grand. A used LS9 was 30 grand. Used engine, not brand new. That's the desire that's the level of desirability and also reliability and also availability. That's exactly because here's the thing about the LS9. The LS9 very rarely do any of these blow up. So how many, you know, LS signs are laying around for anybody to buy? Not only that, but when you think about how many they made of this mm -hmm. versus how many they made of those, mm -hmm. the numbers probably don't compare, do they? Mm -hmm. No, definitely not. I mean, what, to a demon? Yeah. I don't know. Demons are low. Well, production. even demon and, because it's eye? red eye, it's the same motor. Yeah, it's the same, 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 really. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, and also... This, this is one of the criticisms of the C7s. They got pretty heavy. They got heavy in comparison to this. C7s are not heavy by modern standards. No, like not by any means. 35 and change. And this... 34, dude. 33, 34, yeah. This is like 31. Yeah. And it's the same power. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. These are fast. I drove that one up there. It's making a conservative 700 wheel horsepower. And I drove it and I was like, it feels like a normal car. It's a completely docile machine. It does. It's just regular. So you push the and gas. You push the gas. I literally have not remembered the last time. Obviously, this was before I drove the Calvo Viper. <laughs> this, is, this was, I had never seen a speedometer move that quickly. And it's in like a lot, like fascinating. Tesla level. I was like, holy shit. It's fascinating. So, this engine's amazing. I think it will go down as one of the all-time greats, for sure. God. This thing is just so nice. So what do you think? Show them the book? Yeah. Okay, we're going to the back. And this is the technically the right way. Some guys will like push. There's no, there's you just, you, you gotta just get the right height and drop it. There you go. Close nice and solid. That's not gonna pop it back. There we go. All right, so we can't show some of that paperwork, but what I can show you, factory car cover, two. Somebody's gonna love this. Yeah, original, original bill sheet. Original window sticker. Window sticker. Yep. Factory ordered, like, you know, Yeah. window sticker. And this little guy. This is a book all of the photos of this car, this exact car, being it's a build built. book. Yeah, it's a build book where they build, they take pictures of this exact car being built. Yep. Who put panels on, who put the motor in, the whole nine. That's the engine going on the assembly line. Back on the interior. 
<laughs> yep, there you go. That's proof. We yep. didn't add that. That is, uh, it's still on there. There you go. That's them putting the trunk on, and there you go. So somebody's going to love this. Yeah, that's that's a nice piece and, of memorabilia. And, and when this I car. say somebody, it, it is going to take a certain someone to buy this car because uh -oh. of the price. And I think the price is justifiable by the rarity of something like this. How, where can you get a 1900 mile 3ZR, ZR1 in Arctic white? That's, that's um, pretty much nowhere. No, not with a carbon roof as well. Gives us a bit of a, an advantage, of course, but it presents an opportunity for someone to really get what could be something that just jumps astronomically. In yeah. It could be. This is when a car can absolutely become an investment. So this car, we're asking 139.8. That's actually really good. I think that's really we good for this car. We got a lot of criticism over asking what we were asking for that six mile Viper. Um, but you know. So. If you look at, you can go online right now and look at, uh, good Lord, C6 ZR, uh, ZR, ZR1s and look at the prices of the, some of those cars. Most of them are gonna be just over 10 grand Look at the price. Just just look at the price. Ten thousand miles specifically. Yeah, ten grand. Ten thousand miles. Ten thousand miles, not ten thousand dollars, no. <laughs> ten, ten grand, grand in mileage. <laughs> Excuse me. Look at the grand. price. Where the fuck do I start? <laughs> yeah. Look at the prices and you'll see why this is so so special. And why that's a good I think it's a good price. For the right guy. I mean, you know, there are driver's cars out there and and with mods and stuff, but for someone that's looking for this. A collector would love this. The Something that he can dry every once in a while um, and still, you know, maintain very low mileage and still get to enjoy it every once in a while. A collector would love this car. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, like I said, spec is everything with a lot of collectors. And this is hitting on all the levels. For me, I like a little bit of color, like me personally. This looks fantastic, though. I, like I love. It. Well, yeah, I'm partial um, to white cars, so. Yeah, it, for something like this, I would, I would really like, I would love a red. Like something a, that like pops. A, yeah, like a crazy, like a torch red almost. Um, but no complaints for me here. None. I think zero. this car is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Just the way she sits. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful car. Hey, man. This is not your average ZR1. 1900 miles. This car, listen, man, I've been quiet looking at this car. I've been in awe looking at this car because I think it's extremely, extremely special. That's the kind of stuff they have over here, man. They got things that you don't normally get your hands on and then you can find it here. And honestly, I. I I think that's a good price, guys. For real, for real. We will be flashing the information across the stream so you can see the address, I mean the phone number, and the website on the bottom of the screen, guys. If you're interested, you know somebody interested, brokering a deal for someone else, give them a call, man. Check out the website and also you can see some of the other things that's available that this guy put up on the web. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> listen, guys. Come on, man. Y'all know we don't do the normal around here. Why is that, man? Look around us. I see a lot of greatness. And now, look, man, we've been designed from greatness. Man, because we're designed from greatness, guys, you have the right, the responsibility, the authority to never be average. Oh, please.